if you have two choices to make, uh, such as, uh, you know, do I tell this person A or do I tell them B? Or do I, uh, you know, do I take job A or job B? Um, or, you know, do I make this sacrifice now or do I go ahead and do what I want, whatever it is. If you have two choices and they're relatively equal choices, like it, it looks 50-50 to you, this is key. For choices where it's lopsided, you know, 175, the other one's 25, obviously go with a 75. But if it looks equal to you, A or B, and you can't decide, take the path that is more difficult and more painful in the short term. Because what's actually going on is one of these paths requires short-term pain, and the other one maybe requires pain further out in the future. And what your brain is doing through conflict avoidance is it's trying to push off the short-term pain. Um, and by definition, if the two are even and one has short-term pain, that means it has long-term gain. And by the law of compound interest, the long-term gain is where you want to go towards anyway. So your brain is overvaluing the side that has the short-term happiness uh, and is trying to avoid the one with short-term pain. So you have to cancel that tendency out and it's a powerful subconscious tendency by leaning into the pain. Uh, as most of you know, most of the gains in life come from uh, suffering in the short term so you can get paid in the long term. Working out, like for me, is not fun. I suffer in the short term, I feel that pain, but then in the long term, I'm better off because I have muscles or I'm healthier. The same way, if I am uh, reading a book and I'm getting confused, if like I can't understand what's going on, that's just like working out and the muscle getting sore uh, or tired or filling with lactic acid, but it's not just my brain is being overwhelmed. But in the long run, I'm getting smarter because I'm absorbing new concepts sort of at the limit or edge of my capability. So um, you, you, you generally want to lean into things that have short-term uh, pain, but have long-term uh, gain. My trainer, uh, Jerzy Gregorek, uh, uh, aka the creator of The Happy Body, um, he has a beautiful short saying where he says, uh, you know, hard choices, easy life, easy choices, hard life. So what he means by that is if you make the hard choices in the short term, like, oh, I shouldn't eat bad carbs or processed foods, or I should go ahead and do the workout, which is difficult, and I don't feel like doing it, then in the long term, I'm going to have an easy life. But if I make the easy choices in the short time, short term, like I'm going to stay out drinking, uh, I'm going to go party, uh, I'm not going to do my work right now, I'm not going to meditate, whatever it is, then in the long term, you're going to have a very difficult life. You will not have built up that self-discipline. Do you believe that people are incentivized in the short term, which makes them close the eyes because they think they can get through the funnel? All before? the time, right? It's it's, it's like the, the same shit. It's like the first order consequences and the second order consequences. More often in life, life tricks you because the first order consequences are the opposite that's of the correct. second order consequences. Meaning, if you look at it's like food. All the food that's delicious is probably bad for you, and all I mean a lot of them. It's and the and the food. True, man. Uh, so and and it's the exercise. Okay, and it ain't fun. I don't like it the first order consequences are the opposite of the second order That's consequence right. a lot of life it's almost like you're being tricked and life is going to trick you i believe that you're going to go the guy who goes after the first order consequences without regard to the second order consequences is going to be I in call trouble it checkers and chess okay people are always just doing the first that's right and so that is the key oh, that's 100%. why that's that's why you have developed that instinct that we just talked about a little bit go where you can succeed from failure how do a lot of people don't get this most people don't get this because they think failure i don't want failure but because you learned and i learned how to make the most out of failure my instinct is almost failure equals success Me now too. that sounds dumb I, no it doesn't okay. i call failure it failure equals success mi micro fail true. micro failures macro wins right because you learn 100%. whatever you do. As long if as it doesn't not, eliminate you. That's exactly. The, that's it. Exactly. If you don't get killed, knocked out of the game. Okay. Keep playing. Okay. You know how many fighters get knocked down in the first round and win the fight? A high percentage. It's just, it's just so interesting. Right. I love this shit so much. Right. I believe in this. I believe in this tremendously. And, and where it takes me, and it took you in a certain path, where it takes me is the inner relationships. I think a lot of people can't execute what you and I believe in deeply because of their inability to contextualize feedback of their inner circle. Well, but I, I found, I built a whole culture based on this and I built and I found this. 
it takes about 18 months to get in the habit. It's all a matter of habit. I, I understand. And, and if you create a culture, I understand. In which it becomes part of the culture. It's like a culture in which people, I, I don't it. know, are eating and doing healthy I get things. It. Then it becomes self-reinforcing. Uh, and it can be done. What I did I in know. the book I was to that. put together all the protocols. Because I want to book not just theory like this. I wanted to get to produce personal change. In other words, and, and if you're doing the personal change thing, you gotta got to do it. certain things that are protocols that I try, that I learned over those by making the mistakes over something like, you know, whatever it was, 40 some odd years. Can I just make a comment on, Absolutely. before we go on to the next topic on this risk taking issue? Because I think there's a very, very important lesson in my story. Uh, most people don't realize that when I started Sun with Scott McNeely, we started another company a month earlier. And when I see audiences like this, I always ask them, do you remember what company I started and failed at? And nobody can tell. It was a company called The Data Dump. Um, and my point is the following. Your failures don't matter if they're manageable failures. My life wasn't going to end if The Data Dump failed. Uh, I'd be a little bit behind on my rent, but I'd pick up and start again. Um, and and we started both Data Dump and Sun about a month apart, same founders. Uh, and my point is, failure doesn't really matter if it's not going to kill you. Success, on the other hand, everybody remembers 40 years later. Uh, and it changes your li uh, life. And frankly, the failures also are probably one of the more important learning moments in your life. So I, I just want to emphasize what seems like a large risk may actually in the context of 10, 20 or 30 years be a very small risk because nothing about you changes. Maybe you're a little bit smarter. <laughs> That's about it. Right? <laughs> 